Hi there. If you have been enjoying Off The Cuff, please make sure you click subscribe and notifications so you know when we're publishing. We usually do it every week and we need you now because we're trying to get a thousand subscribers by the end of December 2019. If we don't do that, then unfortunately, Off The Cuff will not be free anymore to the public. So if you want to keep it free, make sure you subscribe and let your friends know and friends of a friends and everybody else uh, to make sure that they subscribe so they become part of our channel. Thank you so much and enjoy. One. Hey guys, welcome back to another fantastic episode of ATD CFLs Off The Cuff. You know, your blog about learning and development, instructional design, e-learning, all the things that we do to make people do their job better. <laughs> and one of the key things we had to learn is how do we do things online? How do we keep it engaged if you're a trainer, facilitator? And there is no one better that my friend here, Cassie Labori. Welcome, Cassie. Hi, thank you so much for having me today, Alex. It's so cool. Uh, I'm so honored that you're here, <laughs> and I'm really happy that you're going to share some great stuff with us. I, I understand you, you are about to, did you release a book or you're working on it? What's going on with that? I'm like knee deep in the book mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> it's due, uh, and I have a couple of months and so I've got a few more chapters to write, but um, right now I'm kind of in this big place. Well, it's, it's all about virtual event production. There okay. is not a book right now dedicated just to the role of the producer or the production tasks. Yes. And so I am outlining that and as a former Microsoft trainer, who kind of gets into the tech, it works for me to write this book. <laughs> that is sweet, that is sweet. And you definitely know how to troubleshoot that. <laughs> yeah, so, unfortunately, <laughs> but it's part of it. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. uh, was that like a, was that like a dag of Microsoft? All right, it's just. <laughs> uh, oh, no, 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 I thought you meant troubleshooting virtual no, classroom. I was, I was no. the, I'm, I'm the one, I'm the one doing. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, not me. I'm happy for what happened with my I life know, during that time. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's jokes, it's all jokes. Anyway, so uh, this is right <laughs> off the cuff. Look, um, here's the situation. Uh, let's let's level up with a lot of people. There's people that are watching this perhaps never heard of whatever, what used to be called VILT and whatever we'll call it today. I, I like to call it uh, learning group facilitations or online learning group facilitations. But in any event, uh, traditionally known as virtual instructor-led training, meaning you are having uh, class or training or a course or facilitation of any sort of L&D through this medium that we're using right here. As a matter of fact, we're using Zoom so, or any other uh, platform by, by that matter. But it's over the web. It's usually live, which is known as synchronous. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Taking it back old but, school. <laughs> what's your background about that? How do you get into that? And how, uh, you know, what's your pedigree on that, your background? <laughs> Well, it started long ago with an ad campaign with RuPaul. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I used to live in San Francisco. Wow. It was the late 90s. And I was driving down the 101 towards San Jose. And there was a big billboard uh, off the freeway that featured RuPaul in a blue and green dress with a boa. Okay. And uh, it said, we've got to start meeting like this. <laughs> and then the other one was... Uh, Meetings used to be a real drag, <laughs> mm. and it was WebEx, and WebEx at the time, pre-Cisco days, was running an ad campaign with RuPaul, and I was a Microsoft trainer at that time, and, uh, you know, Silicon Valley, late 90s, lots of fun jobs, lots of fun companies, and uh, I just decided to interview there and wasted no time becoming a product trainer with WebEx. Uh, it was 1999. Wow, and, nice. I know. I always tell people I didn't love it. I just thought it was really cool. They did give me a beach ball and a boa when I joined. Mm. And uh, it was really fun, really awesome um, culture. And uh, we all did work in the office, though. We did not work from home at that time, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Wow. But uh, it was cool. It was great. And I, I learned so much, you know, during that time. And I'm thankful for that, uh, for, for WebEx being my sort of introduction into it, because I think that they were a, the most solid product at that time. And so if I'd started with another one, I don't know if I would have continued on the path. Um, mm -hmm. But I always tell people that I've learned a lot since then, obviously, and I didn't love it in the beginning either. Um, but you know, fast forward and things happen and I learned a lot and that's ultimately what led to my book of 
all the different, at my, my first book, all the different activities and ways that you can engage people online was really, uh, I would say I learned by the bumper car method. Mm, okay. just kind of did it and you bumped into things and that didn't work and so you tried it again and I was pulling from everything I knew how to do in person you know like how do I bounce a beach ball around a room for introductions if I'm in Webex okay, okay. You know, like I, I would look to the activities that I liked and then I would say okay I know what Webex can do so how do I do that here mm. so that's how it all began nice. so how, then, what was the name of the first book interact and engage interact and engage all right guys check the links on the description of this video we'll have the links for her site her books and things like that i know that you go around now uh pretty much all conferences all major conferences training mag learning guild everything else uh talking about this topic and sharing your tips and techniques let's uh talk about then what it takes to do a very engaging and successful um learning session so what are we going to call it because obviously I know. NLP is all <laughs> You know what, that is always the first question. I teach classes to learning and development teams, groups of trainers, designers, um, probably likely to become producers as well. <laughs> and we start with what do you call it? Because I do think it is part of our, if we're going to say that there's a problem in our, in our industry, yeah. is that we don't really have a clear word that we use. You know, mm -hmm. different companies call it different things. In yeah. fact, I was just working with a nuclear power organization and they decided to call theirs Volt, which I actually have to say I loved mm -hmm. um, because it goes with what they do. <laughs> um, virtual online training is what they decided on, virtual online training. Okay, okay. But you know, a lot of people still call it virtual classroom. I would say that the most popular is still virtual instructor-led classroom okay. um, because it's important with what we're doing to differentiate from um, all the amazing e-learning that we create, if that's the correct word to use, you know, the, the learning that you'll be doing where you're not live with an audience of people at the same time. Right, and, and this is time for our magic word, asynchronous. Yeah, yeah, like in the, in, in the, back in the day, yeah, Alex, yeah, right? Day. Uh, synchronous and asynchronous actually worked quite well, but those words have seemed, right. asynchronous is okay to use, but synchronous went on the by and by. I don't know, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't know you just, you know, at the same time. <laughs> but it really, it really, it is that. So yeah, I mean, I probably use virtual instructor-led training or virtual training, which, you know, virtual training is a little tricky because then there's the virtual reality. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. and then yeah. if you use online training, that, that, that includes all of it. Anything. Then the online. problem with that, see, 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 it's an interesting conversation, right? Because I always thought semantically, you say virtual, then it, it doesn't sound real. Well, that's true too. Virtual, I know. Man. And then if you say virtual? online, it just means that, yeah. I mean, I'm I think the key word you. is live. We need to have I'm, live in there. I'm here with you. Yeah, that's what we're doing right <laughs> can you, now. Can you feel my warmth? I do. <laughs> and that's why I love what I do, because that's what I teach people to bring. No, no. Nice. Uh, okay. You know, that's so what people we, forget to bring. They forget, they don't figure, they, they have to figure out how to connect in okay. real ways with real people. And I always teach people to, or I always encourage people, if you will, to work on the feelings first, mm. which might sound like kind of like, wait, what? You know, we, we had to be professional. We need to get to the work. Uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, if you think about like, is use the example of why do you go back to your favorite restaurant? Probably the food, but also the service. Right. You know, you know, everybody knows your name. Right. You know, like I love that. I love when I walk into a place and they're like, "Hey, Cassie, you having the same thing tonight?" Mm -hmm. mm. I love there. that. You've been there a few times. <laughs> That's right. I've been there a few times, and yeah. you know, by the same token, I always use the joke of if you're driving and you don't know someone and they cut you off, you know, you say things to them or you have feelings about them that you would never have about any other living human. Mm. Um, but yet, if you knew that person, you'd be like, oh, sorry. Like, if you cut me off, I'd be like, Alex, I know you wouldn't normally do that. No worries. <laughs> you know? So it's, the <laughs> it's that teaching, um, teaching ourselves, teaching people to deal with how people feel in this environment first. Mm -hmm. And then we can get to the learning and the other sort of challenging things that end up happening. So is there like a specific workflow that we can talk about? I mean, I know, for example, there are, there's always a... You know, some good tips, right? So you have your speaker, or you have your presenter, and then you have your producer, right? Uh, are, that can be two different roles, or it could be one. What's the yeah, matter? yeah. You know, usually I would say, especially with people that are just starting, uh, it's it's a good idea to have two people, because if you think about it, you know, one person focusing on what are we learning, what are we doing, what's the messaging, how will I importantly connect with people, mm -hmm. so that they learn it, hear it, know it, use it, whatever they need to do with it. Um, and then you have a person running the technology. 
mm. uh, in partnership with you. And whether that's another trainer, like I love to have trainers partner up who are new online to do it together first, one focusing on tech, one content, and then they're both growing their skills and then they can switch roles the next time they teach it. Oh, okay, okay. It's such a fun way to do it. But you know, having the role of the producer too is just super important because if you think about it, like if it's time for me right now to be connecting with an audience and helping them, you know, learn a new uh, process that's going to be rolled out that's extraordinarily important for the new strategy. Right. If I have to, you know, as a trainer or presenter, I've spent a lot of time focusing on stories and examples and ways to bring that to an audience that will make sense to them. And if I have to stop and be like, and how do I find my poll, click it, launch it, read the results, close it, and now respond to those results? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a different set of brain skills. Uh, and it takes me away from thinking about what, what the purpose of uh, running the poll would be. And so having someone launch the poll for you so that you can still focus until you know what you're doing, until you're not thinking about how to run a poll. Mm -hmm. Is, a, is, a, is certainly a leading practice. So do you find that uh, technology is uh, at this point also a challenge in terms of doing it more personable in a sense like, we're, like what we're doing right now, we both have webcams on, we can chat, right? But uh, the bandwidth becomes an issue, right? If you have, let's say, 10 people <laughs> using webcams. I mean, it can, you know, the thing is, is things are getting better and stronger and Zoom is an incredible product. Okay. Um, it's, and it, it's, it's becoming easier and easier, but still, as soon as we have 10 people here, 20 people here, and I need to do more than just sit and talk on a camera, right? Mm. This is, this is amazing. And this is wonderful as a start. But now, as soon as I need to open up participants, I'm going to do it. Find chat. Now look at chat. Now find the feedback. Remember to call for the feedback. We want to more. And now I want to. Now I'm going to share my screen to my slides. And now we're going to whiteboard those slides so I can facilitate a conversation. Yeah. How do I do that? You know, you start to get into like. It's not that it's it's hard. It's just that it's a lot in the moment until until you're used to it. I always think about like my phone. When I first got my phone, I was like, wait a second, I got to make a call. Now I make calls while I talk to people. You know, and I had to learn it first. You know? uh, and I think that the, the technology online is a little like that, where it's just kind of a lot. And then if it goes wrong, forget it. Right. And so in the situation you're mentioning, the producer will probably handle the chat and handle that type of stuff. Because if you're, I think it makes a difference if you're on camera, or you're not on camera, right? If I'm on camera and a I'm little. trying to do those things, <clears throat> then it looks yeah. like I'm busy working on my computer. Rather than a little. Well, actually, so... <laughs> I've, I actually will teach presenters and trainers to pay attention to the chat and oh. the feedback. Uh, producers will help if there's a problem okay. or if, if I miss something. But if I'm not paying to the chat, I'm just being a lecturer. And uh, I don't think it's a problem that you're not staring at the computer the entire time. We just, uh, or excuse me, the camera. We just had this conversation yesterday. Someone said, if I'm on camera, shouldn't I be looking at it all the time? And I'm like, if you're doing an interview and you're on a cast like I'm doing right now, probably a good yeah. idea. Okay. But if I'm teaching and we're going to be there several hours, I think we need to be real. And I think I need to be listening to you, um, paying attention to the things that you type, that you say, uh, that you draw. Uh, I, I need everything. And if I were in person, I would not be staring into a camera just like this the entire time. I would be looking around the room, work in the room, you know, you would be too. And we made a joke yesterday where like some people are like this in training. <laughs> you know, and if I were to see that on camera, I, I think, actually think it's kind of fine and funny. I think we need to be real. And I'm talking about a learning event, you know, where yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's connect. Because you staring into a, into a webcam is not an indicator of your, like, amazing learning no. or your engagement. It's just me looking at you, <laughs> you know. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, listen, Zoom, okay. Zoom, Zoom's got this feature of breakout rooms. You use that all, yeah, those a lot? all the time. As much as I possibly can. <laughs> And All the time. Those guys, for those of you that haven't used Zoom and don't know what that is, essentially what it means is you can break out groups of people in your uh, chat and your you know session uh, for them to do work by themselves. So let's say you got ten people, you maybe do some three groups of three or one or four or something like that, and then you're able to step in and step out uh, of each of those rooms, but they don't necessarily know what the other groups are doing. So it's amazing. It's kind of like a group activity, it, it, right? It totally is. And it comes from, uh, like, if you think about in, on a teleconference, you go into a subconference. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And that's, that's what it's doing, but it's also giving you a visual. And uh, the last few weeks, I've been really challenging people with this new breakout activity. 
I've been doing a virtual team training mm -hmm. and I should call it training virtual teams and like sharing my successes and challenges over the years. Right. Uh, but uh, I decided to do something a little different in a breakout where I put people in groups of about four and they went into the breakout. They shared their screen. I chose a leader. They shared their screen. They went and did an image search because I asked them to describe. Um, it's kind of like an opener activity. And I did this. It's so crazy to do an opener as a breakout, but I'm, I'm into it. Um, <laughs> I wanted them to each decide what is the virtual team that you work on like. Mm. But find an image that represents your team and then come back and describe it for the group. Okay. And so the leader had to share their screen, do an image search for their own, and then ask their team members, um, describe your team and their image searching. And they just did a quick copy onto a PowerPoint slide. And then I had them, um, for, for purposes of time, I had each group email me the PowerPoint slide that their team created. And then I, I shared my screen once we all regrouped and I just pulled up each PowerPoint and they then went on to describe their teams through that image. It was just amazing. And they did so much work. Think about it. Yeah. They opened PowerPoint, they're getting images, they're placing them on the screens. People named their PowerPoint slides. They were like, we're team the best. No. And, uh, <laughs> Identity, yeah, personalization, yeah. and they labeled their images. You know, it was amazing. They were doing so much work and, and uh, it wasn't, it wasn't that hard for them actually. That's I mean, awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, the, yeah, go ahead. The reason it worked though too is because I showed them how to do it. Like I, I shared my screen and said, if I'm the team leader, this is how I do the image search, put it on the slide, name it, email it. So I did a quick demo for like two minutes. Mm. And then I said, all right, you guys got this, you got it, you, you can do this. And they were like, we got this. <laughs> it was great. It took like, you know, it took a good half an hour to do that whole thing. But I had that time in the class and it was for the, they yeah. were learning how to be in the virtual environment, plus learning how to share and talk and get to know each other and really use the tools. So that's why that activity, um, why it was worth it for me to take that amount of time to do it. So tell me about the, um, you, you mentioned the bouncing ball, uh, how do you bounce a ball in the room? Oh yeah, so whenever I'm looking at uh, learning activities that I like to do in person, I always look at, okay, what's the point of doing this? What's the objective? Thank you, IDs, for teaching me all that you have. <laughs> <laughs> What's the actionable objective? And uh, that, okay, if that's, the, if that's the goal or the objective, then how might I do that with the tools that I have in front of me? So in the case of the ball, the reason we do the ball is so that people, um, th there's the physicality side of it, A. But then B, um, you're, you're randomly packed to the next person. You get to choose who you'd like to go next. And then you're creating this community. They're, they're, they're already interacting with each other, right? So uh, online, what I'll do is I'll create a slide. And if I have a roster in advance and I happen to have their photos, I will put their photos on the slide. Uh, if I don't have their photos, which often I don't, I put smiley faces all over a slide that would be the number of people. And then I, in the animation tools, and I have them just, I'll circle the person, and I'm like, Alex, you're up. And so then you do your intro, and then you take the annotation tools, and you circle the next person, like draw a line, and circle them. And it's effectively like moving the ball to them. <laughs> so it's not exactly a ball, but the physicality is you drawing on the screen, and then there's that random choosing who's going to go next, and you're likely to pay attention to who you chose. You nice. Know? Yeah, so it's the same end objective right mm -hmm. but done in a different way with the tools that i have um, okay. available to me in a thing like zoom or webex or whatever okay so you're using the annotation tools within the the app yes. and now how do you work the whole because there's a, a bit of cognitive load coming into this at times so meaning the person there might be some people i mean i think it's getting better and a lot of people are used to this already but because of facetime and everything else right the, they're used to the format but some people are not used to the format or the tools within the apps. Right. So yeah. Actually, I have this little thing that I call the learning launch moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and actually, the, the slides are available for download on my site under my resources. Nice. So I'll make sure to give you that link. Uh, but the learning launch for Adobe, for WebEx, uh, for Zoom. But I do every, every moment. When you first join a session with me, there's no waiting and there's no music hold and waiting until we begin. As soon as you're here, you're on the audio and I'll be like, Hey, Alex, uh, how are you doing today? Oh, you know what? Type it in the chat. 
because I know you're going to talk to me, you know, but I get you on the audio first and on the camera and we just say hi. And I'm like, what's, what are you looking forward to today? Type it in the chat. And you're like, where's the chat? And then I'll have something where you're drawing on the screen immediately. Mm. And so you're doing this in ways that are, you know, like choose the, choose the cupcake that you'd like to have right now. If only I could send you a cupcake. Okay. okay. And it's those things that are opinion and fun that are having people use the tools right away. Mm. And so I have this thing called the learning launch where I go through, it's like a 10 minute um, moment in the beginning of every session one of a program, like the first time you're meeting people, because you don't need to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, but it gets to, it runs through introductions and setting the stage for what we are learning through activities that use the main tools. Mm, okay. you know, so, so like, where, uh, where are you located today? Type it in the chat. We were going to use the chat the whole time we're together. So make sure you arrange that in a way that's easy for you to have access to. And then I'll bring up another slide that talks about um, enabling the web, the webcam and turning it off. And, and we'll do that together. Mm. Another slide that is a visual on all the audio options and how you mute yourself. And I tell funny stories about the number of times I've been taken to the restroom, you know, and the various funny things. And we share, I go type in the chat, what's happened to you off of mute? <laughs> you know, yeah. and there are things that they want to say. And then I just remind them, we'll be using these tools. Um, and when I do the whiteboard, for example, too, I bring that in and I'll say something like, if we're doing leadership as a topic, I'll bring in a whiteboard with a grid, say, type your name on one of the boxes. How do I find my name to type, you know? And then I'll go and then describe, I'm like, when I say the word leader, what do you think of? Mm. Type that in one of the boxes yeah. on, on a whiteboard or using annotation tools. Yeah. And so then now we're still on topic of what we're learning that day, but they're also using the tool and there's no wrong answer and I'm getting to know them. And I do all this in the beginning of every first time that we meet. So they know. Right. So I, I do more than be it's a familiar talking. Right, yeah. Right. Like they just get used to, you're always using all this stuff, always using chat, always using feedback. Um, and if we do webcam the whole time, fine, that's part of it, but it's not the only thing. Okay. That's how, yeah. and then people get comfortable eventually. And it is hard at first and, and yeah. they will say, I'm kind of overwhelmed. I'm like, it's okay. I promise you it will never be as hard as it was today. <laughs> you know, that's it. You're done. Well guys, if you've never done this or you've done it a few times and uh, really haven't followed best practices, I mean, you just heard here a bunch of gold and stuff that you can use. And I mean, Cassie makes it, makes it classy. That's, that's what I say. <laughs> I, 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 I gave her the copyright on that one. I, I <laughs> that, but she can take it. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's very creative, very imaginative, uh, really impressive stuff. Um, so I think it's a it's a very I think it's a great experience. Uh, you should stick her out and uh, see some of the sessions. I definitely look forward to see one of your sessions and share all the steps and and where you're doing. But it's pretty. Pretty evident that she is a complete expert on this. It comes in really easy. This is unscripted. We are here off the cuff, and she just bounces like this bad in practice. <laughs> anyway, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my. I'm 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 totally impressed. So <laughs> my my hats off to you. Um, so let me ask you, Cassie. Besides the annotations, besides uh, the interactivity, what else is there? What else do you use? Play games? What, what, what's going um, on? You know, for me, it's all, yeah, I love, anytime there's a game, we're in. <laughs> and anytime there's a breakout, I'm in too. Nice. Uh, and and anytime there's something that I can give you to do. So when I teach trainers how to be trainers in this environment, um, it's interactive right from the moment we connect. And uh, I'll get a volunteer the first time we meet. Within the first hour, I will get a volunteer to teach something. Mm. And so anytime I can give it back to participants to try to do, to work through, I'm going to do it. Um, we build up to people doing their own teachbacks at the end of it where they create their own stuff and they come back and they try it. And so it's mm, like, okay, nice. like, Alex, it's your turn. What have, you, what have you made for us? Share your screen, find your chat. Make sure you use feedback. Make sure you're calling on us. I know you know how to lecture, you know? <laughs> and so anytime that people, I give people the opportunity to do it. I work by this mantra. I have it posted up around my office and I share it with everybody. Um, what did I just say that you could have said? Or what did I just do that you could have done? Oh, yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. That is great. 
So, well, you know, all great things come to an end. And obviously, this episode must end. But uh, not that I want to. I mean, I really love talking to you. I know you're also a busy lady. Uh, I know we're going to have you here for Training Mag in Orlando, right? Yes, yes. I'll be at uh, TK. That's what I'm uh, talking And you're going to be Training Mag. Oh, nice. And I'll be back at for LS Con. So I'll be in the Orlando area. As well? Oh, that's great. I'm a big great. Harry Potter fan. So I'll probably have to go back. I. Hagrid's ride wasn't open yet, so I'll have to Excellent. go back. Excellent. <laughs> so listen, we'd love to have you uh, at the chapter at ATDCFL for an event. Just yeah. uh, I'll be in touch with you. We'll see. We'll make that happen as well for our members. I would love it. I would be honored. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cassie. I wanted to ask you then, what are your last thoughts for someone, let's say, you just became a trainer and uh, will probably have to leverage uh, training online or doing online facilitation. Ah, you know what? Uh, have fun, A, and uh, let them see that and, and be part of that. I think we've, if we can work on the culture of being online, start to look at this is about you and move it away from click a link, watch slides, because mm -hmm. that's what everyone thinks is going to happen. Right. You know, and the way that people are open to that is by you doing that. And, and you modeling that and being that first. And so when people come in, say hi to them, use their names, have them chatting and responding and, and interacting with you rather than sitting and listening to you go through things. Mm. So no one's listening. Have them do and tell and be part of and that their contribution to the situation is what moves it forward. You know, kind of working from that angle. And that takes time too, so be patient with yourself because sometimes people just aren't ready to do that. Um, but as soon as they see that it's working for others, they'll want to jump in too. It's my experience that's the case. That is true. That, uh, I'll yeah. verify that as well. It, it takes out one person, right? Yeah. They're one like, going and that? then the rest of them start flowing into it. It's like, why was your online meeting so good? What'd you do? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I want to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, hey, I'm really, really, really honored and uh, grateful that you did this with us. Cassie, thank you for being an off the cuff. Guys, this has been another great episode, another fantastic episode of Off the Cuff, where we had Cassie Labore talking about online facilitation. We'll see you on the next one. Awesome.